My introduction to the current wave of underground internet hip-hop began in 2011 after discovering Live Love ASAP on Datpiff, an incredibly vibe-heavy and smoked-out mixtape that combined the sounds and themes of chopped and screwed music, trap, and cloud rap. While the project wasn't the first cloud rap release, it was definitely one of the most iconic, due to its braggadocious lyrics, trippy feel, cloudy atmosphere, and amazing beats. The tape's narcotic, dreamy sound and unique production launched ASAP Rocky and the ASAP Mob into the mainstream. However, standing right beside Rocky was an important figure whose contribution to the SoundCloud scene and influence on Rocky's style went mostly unrecognized. This dark figure started many trends and led a large group of artists who went on to become extremely successful, leaving him blackballed and in the shadows with a small but dedicated cult fanbase and a legacy that continues to influence the scene today. This goes perp, man. What's going on with that, big? F him, f him. Straight up, you know what I'm saying? He one of those cats, like, a lot of guys just hang around me, try to get high, and you know, when they dip off, start throwing dirt on the young blood, they can't stop the pretty motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, he know what it is, and he's trying to lie to people, pumping that we took styles from him, and I mean, if you really look at it, the proof is in the pudding. He's corny, and he's corny, and he's corny. Space Ghost Perp is a name surrounded in controversy. His countless beefs, Twitter antics, name changes, and rumors of being bipolar have led to a poor perception in the mainstream and amongst his enemies' fan bases, despite his contributions to the thriving underground SoundCloud scene. While mixtapes like Blackland Radio 66.6 and the album Mysterious Funk gained some mainstream attention during the height of his career, most people think of Perp as a washed up rapper who squandered his potential to make it big alongside ASAP Rocky. However, there is a lot more to SGP's story than what most people are led to believe. In fact, Perp is a highly regarded and celebrated artist amongst his cult fanbase, who continue to support and follow his newer music regardless of his flaws and status. His diverse style, unique production, and ability to create an atmosphere makes him an extremely interesting artist. While Perp has demonstrated his ability to rap lyrically on many tracks, he usually focuses more on vibe and atmosphere, often opting to freestyle over his beats resulting in many rough bars and crude lyrics. Outside of his solo career, he has produced for many high-profile artists, such as Wiz Khalifa, Juicy J, ASAP Rocky, and Lil Uzi Vert, as well as underground artists such as Rob Banks, Goth Money, Thousand Band Forney, Choppo, Spooky Lee, Lil Tracy, and Wi-Fi God, not to mention countless beats for members of his iconic crew, Raider Clan. A group of diverse artists and rappers many of which went on to become extremely successful solo artists. The group was the first of its kind and helped to inspire many of the biggest internet collectives today. Perp was also responsible for the Raider Clan hieroglyphics and various other trends, and is often credited for the resurgence of Memphis rap in modern hip-hop culture. With an endless array of mixtapes, EPs, loose tracks, and a style that has changed dramatically over the years, Perp's discography can be very daunting for a first-time listener, not to mention the discrepancy in the quality of his music. But regardless of whether you like his new or his old music, or perhaps hate all of it, Space Ghost Perp's story is an extremely interesting and vital part of modern underground rap history. So who exactly is Space Ghost Perp, and how did he end up where he is today? This is a complicated topic, and to truly understand what happened, it's important to start from the beginning. On April the 1st, 1991, 
Marcus Rowley was born in Carroll City, Miami, Florida, also known as Black Lion. Growing up in the area as a kid, Marcus was a keen skateboarder and fan of rap. Unlike most youth growing up in his area, Perp listened to a lot of heavy rock and metal, both of which influenced his music, fashion style and personality in years to come. At a young age, he began rapping by watching his friend Qaddafi spit and write bars along with Doe two times. The three would later form Raider Clan, along with Money Jr. and the late JIT. Perp's oldest known release dates back to 2009 with a mixtape Why So Serious, released on MySpace under the name Joker Jr. He also played the drums in school and was 13 when his cousin introduced him to FL Studio. He began making beats using the software, creating drum patterns and sounds influenced by Southern underground rap. Crunk and Trap. His first beats dropped on SoundClick in February of 2010 under the moniker Money Jordan and resembled the classic Lex Luger style that was popular at the time. Shortly after, Perp's close friend Jit passed away, an important moment in his development that he would reference on many of his projects in years to come. Later in March, Marquis dropped his first beat tape and changed up his sound quite a bit, combining the sound of trap drums and Memphis production tropes with video game, soul and 80 samples, a style that would later become common amongst SoundCloud producers from the current scene, commonly referred to as Fong. These beats, while rough, were starting to show potential. Perp later refined this style on his first tape as SGP, NASA the Mixtape. NASA was released on the 13th of September 2010, and was the first mixtape from Space Ghost Perp I ever listened to. This tape was like nothing I'd ever heard before. Its syrupy, bass-heavy production, weird lyrics and sound effects left me incredibly confused and curious. Not to mention the weird cover art and poor mastering. However, the more I listened to it, the more obsessed I became. The self-produced tape was incredibly unique for its time and draws influence from Southern hip hop, as well as experimental rap, such as Odd Future, Little B and Metro Zoo, another important group coming from Florida, whose tape Kushpak dropped only months before Perps. Like Metro Zoo, Perp was heavily influenced by Miami bass. This can be seen through the electro influence in his music and hypersexualized lyrics which make their way onto the tape. On the mixtape, SGP presents himself as an aloof hedonist who doesn't give a single fuck, indulging in the worship of money, women, drugs and the material world, taking tropes from southern rap stereotypes and pushing them to the extremes. These lyrics are clearly not intended to be deep or groundbreaking. In fact, it's the absurdity of them which makes them entertaining. However, Perp is highly self-aware and even admits in interviews that this is an artistic choice, stating, When I was younger, I was more about lyrics. I would get on the beat and spit. I wouldn't even have a hook. I would just spit. I'm still lyrical, but when you're a producer, lyrics is not the biggest deal anymore. It's about creativity. This attitude is incredibly relevant in the current hip-hop scene which puts an emphasis on vibe and feeling rather than lyrical content, with the voice serving as an additional instrument in the music rather than the main focus. But what allows Perp to get away with this is his unique aesthetic, atmosphere and production style on the tape, sampling anything from R&B, hip hop to 80s soul music. Some great examples of this include Intro Rare, which samples Immature's I Wanna Know You That Way. For the love of money, which samples little chills, ain't no love lost. I lost my homie in the fucking game Rolex I close my eyes, down my head, let's have a moment of silence And pour the crooked eye on the curve My homies down one by one And it's getting on my nerves Ride through the city slow, looking at the city lights Sipping on some sticky leaves, feeling so good And I ain't money in exchange That's what I'm living like I just wanna live in the morning and every night And Friday which samples Shirelle's Saturday Night Love.
Perp uses these samples in combination with trap drums and sound effects from the Windows game Space Cadet Pinball, a game I remember playing on my dad's IBM ThinkPad in the early 2000s. Having this point of reference, coupled with the tape's lo-fi sound, creates an incredibly nostalgic, trippy and sedated feeling for the listener, echoing the vibe and atmosphere of Vaporwave, which makes sense considering how prominent the chopped and screwed influence is on the tape. Elements of dubstep can also be heard on the mixtape with the track Sex Money Drugs. The thick bass line and synthetic saxophone sounds create a very nostalgic Miami Vice esque atmosphere and remind me of the game Vice City. Distorted 808s are another extremely distinct element on the tape, and can be heard most prominently on NASA game. This is probably the most sinister track on the project, and features extremely explicit and repetitive lyrics. While this mixtape wasn't as popular as Blackline Radio, I still believe it was just as important, and has influenced many artists both directly and indirectly. Take for example Black Cray, whose hazy lyrics and production also create a similar atmosphere to Perps, or Wi-Fi God and XXX Tentacion, using distorted 808s in their tracks years later. Producers from the SoundCloud beat scene have also clearly been influenced by the style, using sound effects from video games as beat tags and drops, as well as funk, soul and 80s pop samples as melodies for funk and cloud rap beats. NASA was later remastered in 2014, with many of the best features removed including the lo-fi sound and pinball samples. However, some listeners may enjoy the cleaner, more accessible sound. There also exist various chopped and screwed versions of the tape that are fairly enjoyable and worth checking out. The NASA Lost Tape compilations also serve us during this time period, featuring a wide variety of sounds and styles. SGP began using dates from the 90s in these compilations, which further enhanced his nostalgic and lo-fi image, a motif that would continue throughout his career. By the end of 2010, Perp had dropped an impressive collection of projects. As a result, his unique take on rap started to garner him some internet buzz, and fans were eager to hear what would be coming next. Little did they know, one of Perp's next projects would be the beginning of a new era of rap and the start of something much bigger. In 2011, a few months after dropping Perped and Chopped, SGP released his most popular and widely celebrated project, Blackline Radio 66.6. This tape was incredibly important and was responsible for SGP's surge in popularity and record deal with 4AD. Around the same time, Rocky, Perp and ASAP Yams first linked, resulting in a strong connection and a relationship that would later turn sour. I first started listening to this project when I was 16 and it quickly became the soundtrack to many of my journeys to and from school. The unique production of the tape and weird sound effects captivated me, appealing to my edgy teenage feelings at the time. The 22 tracks in the tape build upon Perp's unique production style, while also paying homage to various hip-hop scenes from the 90s, with a mishmash of styles including Boom Bap, Chopped and Screwed, and Memphis Rap. However, what makes the tape different from NASA is the change in atmosphere and vibe, on the tape, Perp's beats are much darker and atmospheric, featuring screams from Mortal Kombat characters and Godzilla, as well as air horns and other sound effects. These sounds make the tape instantly recognisable, and are sometimes used as percussive or melodic elements in tracks, creating a sinister underworld vibe, familiar to fans of Memphis Horrorcore. The Houston influence can also be heard, with slowdowns and screwed up sections at the end of tracks, creating a sedated and leaned out atmosphere for the listener. To further enhance the nostalgic sound of the 90s underground, Rolly intentionally mixes his tracks at different volumes, 
forcing the listener to turn the volume up or down depending on the track, as well as adding a consistent clicking effect at the start of every track. These subtle changes to the sound of the tape make me feel like I'm listening to an authentic tape cassette from the 90s, once again demonstrating Perp's unique ability to create an atmosphere. The tape also samples from all over the place. Some examples include Legend of the East Pyramid, which samples Porter's head Strangers. Captain Planet, which samples Tangerine Dream's remote viewing. Don't Get Your Head Bust, which samples the Mortal Kombat Soul Chamber theme. Underground, which samples the theme from Zombie. Samples the motherfucking reel by Easy E. And it's a fact to be exact. My tombstone should read he put Compton on that map. And that's how a nigga feel when I'm giving up the motherfucking reel. Yeah, it's time for me to do what I got to do. Cause if you ain't fucking with me, then nigga, I ain't fucking with you. I'm coming through with my dogs And we chillin' in the back with black with gone up in the fall Nigga, yes, she in the While samples are the backbone for the majority of the tape, Perp also uses synths on some of the tracks, most notably on Ben Fuego, with its Ogun presets and textures that create a unique, otherworldly feeling. This track is definitely my favourite from the tape, due to its powerful drop. That utilizes a pounding Lex snare that cuts through the thick, sludgy atmosphere of the track with aggression. Ben Fuego was later remastered on Mysterious Funk, along with various other tracks that employ a similar style. This style later became Perp's signature sound, with mixtapes such as BMW and Intoxicated, building upon the strange alien sounds from Ogon and thick, sludgy textures. Perp also leaves his mark on Blackline Radio with his iconic hieroglyphic track titles, replacing E's and O's with X's and U's as well as A's with V's and S's with Z's. For example, the track Get Your Head Bossed, which is stylized like this. This hieroglyphic style became a trademark in the Raider Clan aesthetic, along with wearing all black and embracing a wide palette of hip-hop influences, predominantly Memphis and Houston rap elements. This can also be seen in the album artwork, that appropriates the iconic pen and pixel art style from the 90s, along with the dopest album in 1991, quote, on the right side, Just like on NASA, Perp relies heavily on his stream of consciousness when freestyling and writing his lyrics. However, on this project he comes across as more introspective, rejecting the tough thug archetype common in rap and adopting the persona of a tortured soul, discussing topics of hopelessness and getting a job, fake people and friends, hatred towards corny rappers, betrayal from females and being a misunderstood outcast. These themes were not super common in rap at the time and helped to attract Perp Yard outside of fanbase many of which share similar frustrations in their lives. While the majority of the tape was self-produced, it also features guest vocals and production from Super Sword Human. Main attractions, 
JK the Reaper, and Lil Ugly Me, who also designed the tape's cover art. Although the project received limited acclaim, Pitchfork gave it a 7.1 out of 10, stating, Blackland Radio 66.6 is a mess of 3-6 chanting, woozy Wu-Tang loops, DJ screw wheeze, and Mortal Kombat and Godzilla sound effects. All paired with an off-the-dome rapping style that's equal parts Little Wayne and Little B. This appropriation and combination of musical influences mentioned in this review is what really makes Space Ghost Perp stand out as an artist. While most revival artists tend to create specific replicas of older sounds, Perp takes it to the next level and recontextualizes and combines various sounds in a collage-like way, resulting in a new and truly unique outcome just like sampling does. This meta, post-ironic style of hip-hop is extremely prevalent with today's rappers, who use pop culture references and the now universal sound of trap music in combination with other genres. This to me is the essence of hip-hop and something that most old heads seem to misunderstand, despite the fact that sampling, aka the appropriation of older music, is one of the most defining characteristics of hip-hop. However, this is a topic for a future video. These weird, spaced out sounds and themes of Black Clan Radio ended up becoming the blueprint for the Raider Clan style and began to influence various artists from the group. ASAP Rocky was also a big fan of the sound, whose track Purple Swag was heavily influenced by Black Clan Radio. This can be heard in the use of the Mortal Kombat samples at the beginning of the record, as well as the song's themes. In the video, Rocky also sports grills and all black clothing echoing the style Perp was known for. The two would later become close friends after Rocky reached out, resulting in various collaborations such as Purple Swag Chapter 2, Pretty Flocko Jodie, and my personal favourite, Keeper G from Live Love Asa. The two also featured on Juicy J's Blue Dream and Lean mixtape. However, not long after, Perp and Rocky's relationship would deteriorate after a series of events created tension between the two as well as a tense beef between ASAP Mob and Raider Clan. These events and more will be discussed in my next video, so stay tuned. Also, please let me know if you have any information that I missed, or should discuss in the next video. My goal with this channel is to present the information in the best way possible, so I appreciate any feedback or ideas. I also do graphic design and music videos, so please hit me up if you'd like to work. You can reach me on Twitter or Instagram. Thanks for watching. Ha 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 ha! Superb!